Hello, this is Tov from Trifle Production with another Blender Quick Tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can access human beings and make them inside of Blender using this add-on called the Human Generator. It's just like manual Bastoni Labs, something like that to even make human, but it's a lot better. And you can use it within Blender and it comes uh, with rigging systems, um, you see it comes with clothing and hairstyles and everything like that and it's really 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 uh, exceptional now I'll, I'll leave a link of it so you can download it yourself and check it out um, that link will be below this video and the version I'm using is 3.0 I don't know if it's the latest version but that's the version I'm using at this point in time and it's for 2.92 and I think it could be used for 3.0 and above, but I'm using 2.92. Uh, now the installation for it is a little bit different. Uh, and I'll explain to you, so you go to edit, preferences. It's not the normal installation process. Let me type in the add-on. Just put a check in the box, activate it. Um, but once you've unzipped the folder, it looks like this. I can pull it up. Uh, here. So you have the main add on right here. And then you have all these zip folders that contain the textures, clothing, hair, uh, the base humans, the poses, experiences, and things like that. And to install it, like I said before, it's a little bit different. Uh, the first thing I have to do is install the add on itself. And once you've installed the add-on, it'll come up. It won't look exactly like this because I've already installed it, but you'll have options for installing um, these zip files. Now, it'll say install um, the packs. You'll have that option within the installation process. And once you've uh, found that option there, make sure you click on all of the zip folders but before you do that you have to create another empty folder uh, for it to unzip all these files into uh, i've created mine already a while back called the human gen narrator version 3 content pack if you click in there you'll see it, it's all been unzipped in there and you'll have that option in the installation process too it'll, it'll have an option where it says uh installation path You'll just click on that, click on that folder that you just created, which is an empty folder. And then the option that says uh, install the, the packs, you click on all of the unzipped uh, files here. You have to click on all of them because it won't work properly if you don't click on all of them. And once you've selected all of these folders and the options, all the unzipped files and the options, uh, for the add-on, you click on install all the packs and it's going to install it and unzip it into the empty folder that you've just created, which would be this. And once that's done, then the add-on is ready to go. It'll say, it'll say select content packs and that's where you have to select all those unzipped folders to unzip them into the new folder that you created. I know I'm repeating it, but it's just it's just kind of a, a really strange and kind of a tedious process. Once you've gone through that, and then it's ready to use. And you'll see the option here for the human generator. And this is a lot better than the previous version because the previous version had a limited amount of humans. This has probably, I don't know, 10 to 15 different uh, people or versions of base humans in it. It's got the Asians, um, black, it's got Caucasian and Hispanic or one Hispanic that's different. But you have those options there and you have male and you have female, the same options for the female where you have Asians, uh, black, Caucasian and one Hispanic. That's still kind of weird. I don't know that why there's only one Hispanic, but it is what it is. Uh, and when you click on, let's get rid of this cube first. 
So I can go through the parameters and see what they have to offer us. Let's click on mail. And we're going to click on, let's see, let's go with, uh, let's go with black number three and generate new human. And it's a little bit, oh, it's really fast. It's faster, a lot faster than, than the previous version. Let's go into one and let's look at our character. Now it renders both, both an Eevee and the cycles. So I'm going to leave it on Eevee for the sake of this tutorial. I'm going to click on a uh, different rendering viewport and see, just get an idea of what this looks like rendered. And there we go. Let's change the world settings, make it a little bit brighter so we can see our character a little bit better. Let's turn that off. And you can see that it, it's, uh, once again, I've always say this, between cycles and EV cycles is a lot better. Gives you more, much more realistic uh, results. But EV is not too bad. You can see the uh, kind of the subsurface scattering it in the skin and then the lips and the eyes and things like that, which is pretty nice. You can randomize your character, the whole body, if you want to. Let's change our viewport again. If you click on random, it's going to randomize the whole, whole body. The muscularity, the, <coughs> excuse me, the weight, um, the amount of fat in the body. Some of them don't look too realistic, uh, but when you put clothing on the body, you know, the anatomy doesn't, doesn't really matter, but you can see you have options there. You can, in, you can change the individual aspects of the body by clicking on that option for the head, neck, chest, shoulders, and so on and so forth. You can change the length, uh, the face also. You can click on that. You can randomize the face. And when you click on it, this whole uh, space isn't active. You have to click on the uh, icon itself or on the, on the uh, words to get the options to come up. You can randomize the upper face, lower face, and so on and so forth. You can change the skin too. Click on that. And you can change the tone of the skin, the redness, saturation. Uh, surf, surface scattering, I always keep that on because it gives you, because when light hits the body, hits the skin, you want it to interact with the light. So I always turn that on. It gives it a better result. You can keep the underwear, underwear on or off. That's up to you. Can have freckles, beauty spots, uh, can age the character. I want to look at the face. You can increase the sagging of the skin. Let's turn that up, see what that does. We turn this up a little bit. You can see it's starting to sag around the j jowls here, the chin, uh, the cheeks. You can increase the wrinkles. If we go into um, a different viewport, we can see. You can see the aging on the face from the wrinkles and the sagging of the skin. So that looks pretty nice. Looks better in cycles, but you can see the results of that when, we, when we've uh, bumped up the, the amount there. I uh, can have a beard shadow, increase the uh, amount of the mustache and the beard, change the eye colors, uh, change the hair. Now the hair options also have been increased, so that's pretty nice. You have afros, because before in the first one, I don't think there were there was much of an afro option in there, but now you have like four different afros. You got buns, straight hair. Um, you got all kinds of different hairstyles in there, which is a great option to have. They've really improved this add-on quite a bit from the first original version. This is much, much improved. Uh, so let's pick uh, an afro in here. And that, because it's a particle system, it may take some time to populate, but look at how real it looks. Let's change the viewport again, see how that looks. And it looks really nice. Once again, it looks better in cycles as opposed to Eevee, but this does look nice. It looks kind of shocked there, but the hair looks good. And then when you want to uh, put more options or add more to it, it kind of, it, Limits the hair particles so that doesn't slow down your system, which is great. Uh, you can add facial hair. There's like, I guess like 10 of them, so that's not too bad. You can change the hair length. You can make the afro shorter, because this has kind of two levels of afro. It has an outer, thicker part, and a part that's 
a little bit closer to the scalp. You can see that I've just turned the outer part down. I can turn the inner part down too. And that looks, uh, that's a smaller afro, but this, that looks good. You can click on finish creation. That will bring up the options for the clothing. So click on that. <clears throat> and once you've done that, that's when it kind of limits the hair particles in your viewport. So it doesn't like slow down your system. And hopefully it's not going to crash the crash the interface here, or crash the computer, because I can see this is trying to process here. If this takes too long, I'll stop the recording and I'll start it back up again when it's done processing uh, the human. So I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, and I'm back. And yes, like I mentioned before, it limits the number of particles in your viewport, so it doesn't slow down your system. It does the same thing with the beard. And it does has uh, eyelashes also. It does the same thing with the eyelashes, or eyebrows, I mean. Sorry about that. Um, you can apply clothing, footwear, pose, expression. And with the clothing, what I've seen, it's kind of limited. You can also put your own clothing in there. Uh, the kind of clothing it has in here is, is a little bit different. It's not like your, you know, um, shirt and pants kind of deal. It's a lot of uh, sweats and a lot of like uh, tight fitting clothing. But you can change, you can make it a little bit looser, a little baggier. We're going to click on this one, Golf Day. And kind of see how it looks on our human here. Now you can see that the clothing is like really stuck to his body. And we can change the color also. Let me see. It's going to populate the textures. Okay, you can see that the textures on the clothing, it's, if you zoom in really good, you can see that can see that you can see the threads in the clothing which is also quite nice but you can change the textures of the clothing let's uh, activate our options there you can change it to uh, red blue green wherever you want to uh, I can click on the secondary part of it to change that also to a different color so all the clothing options have these uh, readily available changes that you can make to any part of the clothing. You can do the same thing with the pants. You can add a pattern to it. If you click on add pattern, it's got different patterns you can add to it. And if you really know about notes and things like that, you can actually go into the uh, note editor and apply or add textures yourself without having to go through the options or the preset that they have for the character's clothing here as it is. You can just uh, Divide your window here and go to your sheet editor. And here's the notes set up here. You can go through here and change the textures if you want to. You can, you can actually delete the whole thing if you want. Delete this whole note setup because the texture slots, as you can see, is already here. You can just delete this and create your own texture from scratch. But that's uh, it's up to you if you want to do. Join this back together. Now, sometimes you can have some really wide textures there, these big wide patterns here. Uh, and I don't think you can change the size of this actually through the add on. You'd have to go through the node system to change the size of your textures because you can see from the uh, appearance here that the lines are quite big. So, and you can delete the textures too, just press remove and it takes it away and you have options for like I said the shoes if we scroll up uh, let me see let's scroll so go back to human and then you can access the clothing the footwear actually different kinds of shoes are here you have like, uh, I guess, six, seven pairs of shoes. You can click on any one you want. Scroll down to those at the bottom. Uh, you can change the pose. You can, you can choose from the library. You have a lot of different presets for posing your character. Let me see. You can scroll up here. You have all these poses, running, uh, T pose, A pose, sitting, so on and so forth. So you have those poses that you can apply to your character. Or you can click on Rigify. And pose the character yourself. Uh, I've, sometimes I've used Rigify before for 
composing the characters and this kind of made the computer crash. I don't know what that is, but I don't know if it's the system or if it's my computer, but just kind of be careful with that. I can change the expression also. It's got uh, a plethora of expressions to choose from. And that's also quite nice. Blinking. You got uh, cheek suck, a look of disgust, lip funnel, so on and so forth. You can click on any one of those to change the expression of your character. And I've seen with this is that uh, you can make multiple characters at once if you want. And that option is right here. Uh, only thing is, I've tried it before. And like I said before, I don't know if it's my computer or what it is, but once you try to make multiple characters, sometimes it'll, it'll take an extra ex extraordinary amount of time for it to propagate the characters. You can do three characters at a time, and it just takes a while. So I just do one character at a time. You can press Shift A also, and the options for making characters is here also. You click on that to pick whatever characters you want. And the cool thing about this add-on, it comes with a tutorial that will show you how to use every aspect of uh, the add-on. Now, one aspect that it, it will not show you how to do, uh, sorry about that, is changing the size of the clothing. As you can see, the clothing, it's kind of, that's how it is with all the characters. If you make them big or small, it kind of sucks in the clothing onto the character. But the way you can kind of make the clothing kind of loose, looser, is left click on the clothing, the pants of the shirt. And then you're going to go to uh, the object data properties. And then you're going to scroll down. You don't have to scroll down, but just click, click plus and it'll create the shape key for you. And then you just go to edit mode by pressing tab. And we're going to click on our move gizmo there. I'm going to make sure that our proportional editing is turned on by clicking on that icon there. Uh, left click on the part of clothing you want to make looser. And then you can just pull it on any axis. I'm going to pull it on the X axis, left click and drag. And I'm going to scroll down on my mouse wheel to kind of make it uh, kind of decrease the influence. And if you see that once you drag on your character and it's pulling more than what it's supposed to pull, you can change that by going up to the option here. Left click on that and click on connected only. That way it'll limit it from trying to pull the whole mesh and just kind of pull the part of the mesh that's closest to the vertices that you've selected. So left click and drag again. You can see that it's not pulling the whole clothing, it's just pulling the clothing or the part of the mesh that's close to that uh, uh, vertex I just selected. Left click over here also. Pull this out a bit. Now this is just an example. You can do a better job than what I'm doing. I'm just doing this for the sake of this tutorial to show you how you can make the clothes a little bit looser on your character. And get out of edit mode by pressing tab again. And then just scroll down and you can increase the value. And you can see that as I pull up the value of the, uh, you can name this too. Double click on there. I'm gonna change it to uh, loose clothing. Loose clothing, enter. Just so I can know what the shape key does. And you can tell, you can see as I move my uh, values up and down, you can look at this part of the pants we just adjusted here. It makes it looser. That way all your characters don't have that, all your characters don't have that kind of tight fitting clothing uh, on them all the time. You can do the same thing with the shirt also. Click on the shirt, click on plus, shape key, then adjust it in edit mode, and then uh, adjust the value and then you're set. But yeah. This is the human generator add-on that's a built-in add-on that's for Blender. It's not built into Blender, but it's for Blender. And it does a pretty good job of creating humans from scratch. And that's today's Blender quick tip. And I hope this was helpful for those of you who are watching. I really appreciate you guys who have subscribed in the past, those of you who are subscribing now, and those of you who are subscribing in the future. And I will see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.